Hi there, in this video I wanted to explain what the sort of interpretation is when we have two continuous variables multiplied together in some sort of regression model. Okay, so let's think about a particular example. The idea here is that let's say we were trying to explain a company's level of sales, but we were trying to do that in terms of, let's say, the effect of price and let's say the effect of advertising. Yeah, so this might be the company's level of advertising spend and this is just the company's price which is set for a particular product. So traditional sort of theory would it sort of expect us to have a downward sloping demand curve. So we would expect beta 1 to be less than 0 because if you lower the price then sales increase. And we would sort of expect that if we spend more on advertising then sales tend to be higher as well. So we've got beta 1 being less than 0 and beta 2 being greater than 0. But let's say we included a third term here, which was beta 3, and now we included the product of price and the company's spend on advertising. What interpretation can we actually give to this beta 3? Well, let's think about this in two different situations. So let's say that the company was, let's say, spending 100,000 on advertising. And let's think about what the company's sort of expected sales would be under that situation. Well, the idea is that the company's level of sales we would expect if advertising was 100 would be equal to alpha plus beta 1 times the price plus now we're going to get 100 beta 2 for this third term and then we're going to get plus 100 um, beta 3 times the price. Okay, so what does this show us? Well, we can actually sort of think about the effect of price. Because price is appearing twice in our model here, we can sort of combine the price variables to sort of create a sort of aggregate effect of price. So here we would have the aggregate effect of price would be beta 1 plus 100 beta 3. Yeah, and then that would all be multiplied by the price. So what interpretation does beta 3 and what sign would we expect beta 3 to have in this case? Well, we would actually expect that beta 3 would be greater than 0. Why would we expect that? Well, the idea here is that if you spend more money on advertising, then that tends to decrease the sensitivity of your consumers to price changes in that product. So notice that this appears because beta 1 is less than 0. So if we're adding 100 beta 3, where beta 3 is greater than 0, then the idea is actually we have decreased the sort of sensitivity of consumers to price changes, or we've sort of made our customers less reactive to price changes which is something which you might expect a company's sales to exhibit, right? You might expect that if you spend more money on advertising, you increase the sort of brand value or the sort of non-tangible uh, effect which consumers consider when they're thinking about your brand, so that might make them less price sensitive. Okay, so that's kind of what beta 3 is representing in this case. Let's think about another example whereby, let's say we had the price level being equal to 10, and let's sort of say what we might predict the company's sales to be in that's that case. So the idea is that the company's sales on average when the price was 10 would be equal to alpha plus 10 beta 1 plus beta 2 times the level of advertising, which we haven't specified, plus now we're going to have 10 beta 3 times the level of advertising. So notice that again here we have two terms here which essentially have the same variable. So we can combine these. So we now have an aggregate effect of advertising being equal to beta 2 plus 10 beta 3. Yeah, so what does beta 3 represent in this case? Well, remember that we found from the first example that beta 3 by theory should be greater than 0. Well, what does it say in this case? Well, it says if your price is higher, so remember that price is sort of represented by this 10 here, then the effect of advertising tends to be greater. So that might well be the case, right? If you have a higher sort of premium price product, you might have to demonstrate to consumers that it's worthwhile buying. So the effect of advertising is greater than if you had, let's say, a low price product, which consumers would flock towards anyway. So beta 3 generally, what does it mean? What do we learn from these, considering these two cases? Well, it shows that the effect of price depends on the level of advertising spend and the effect of advertising tends to be determined by or tends to be affected by the level of price. So beta 3 is sort of a way of adjusting the effect of price and advertising to take into account their sort of multiplicative effects on one another. 